ChatGPT is great, but if you've ever wanted to train your own AI model to do the exact task you're looking for, this is the video for you. The process is called fine tuning, and it's actually a lot more complicated the way a lot of people put it, but in this video, I'm gonna simplify the entire process for you. I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how you can train a lightweight model to do the exact task you're looking for, and I'm gonna make this insanely easy. You're not gonna wanna miss this, so let's jump right in. All right, so for this tutorial, I'm gonna use something called together.ai. Now there's a bunch of different ways to use this. You could use Kaggle, you could use Hugging Face. There's a bunch of different ways to train data sets, but I found for me, this is the simplest way to train a data set. It's the easiest way to go from having a data set to a trained AI model, uh, and it actually works really, really well for corporate uses, for business uses, because it can spin up an API for you to actually use this model. So I found it very, very useful. I think it's a great product. I'm not sponsored by them at all. I just think that it's really cool. So let's jump right in. So basically you just go to together.ai. This is a paid service. And basically the way it works is they have these GPU clusters, right? So they have a ton of GPUs that you can use. So essentially what you do is you pay to use their GPUs. So you give them a certain amount of money and then you can basically pay to use their GPUs. You can host models there, you can train models there and you can use your trained models. So they have pricing here. I put like 50 bucks in here. I mean, I've been using this a lot and I still have like 21 bucks remaining. So it's really not very expensive to be honest. And I think for, you know, the stuff that we're doing, I really don't think it's very expensive at all. But I'm sure if you're using a bigger corporate level, this could get very expensive. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you through this whole process. But it, it's, it's very, very simple. So essentially you create an account, you add some credits. I think it comes with like $5 of free credits right off the bat. So you, you, you're gonna have a few free credits there, but you're gonna wanna add some if you're actually gonna use this to any kind of real level. And essentially what you do uh, once you've signed up for it is you want to start fine tuning. So you can see here that I've already fine tuned a bunch of models. Um, and you see I'm mainly using the Meta Llama 3.18 B instruct reference. So the whole idea behind training AI models is that we're going to take an open source model, right? So you can actually train closed source models like GPT and things like that. But the idea here is that we're going to take a very lightweight open source model and we're going to train it to do exactly what we want it to do. So the reason I like Meta Llama 3.1 is it's a very lightweight model that's actually very capable of doing a lot of different things. If I go to the models tab, you can see they actually have a ton of different models down here. You could use DeepSeek R1. You could use a bunch here. Now, the pricing does depend on the model, right? So DeepSeek R1 is gonna be more expensive. That's why I like 3.1B uh, from Llama, uh, 8B from Llama, because it's actually really cheap. So let's find that here. So yeah, 8B. So yeah, it's only 18 cents. So it's actually a lot cheaper and for a lot of use cases, you really don't need a very expensive model to do this. So that's sort of the advantage here, right? You can train your own model. You can use a really lightweight model. You could use video models. These are image models here. You could use video models. You could use text models. You could train whatever you want to do a better job, right? So if I'm only making car videos or I'm only analyzing lung x-rays, for example, right? And I just want my AI to do one specific thing. I don't need this huge general AI that's trained on a million different things. I wanna take a lightweight model and I wanna train it on one specific task. This is what you're looking to do. So um, we're gonna just use a quick example here. Now you're gonna to need to start with a data set. And um, essentially the way to do this, there's a million ways to get data sets. So one way you could do is you can go to Hugging Face. This is a, a huge repository of data sets. So they have 366,000 data sets here. So I could come in here and I could find a data set. There's ones on coding, there's ones on video, there's ones on, on a million different things, right? You can see huge companies create them here. So OpenAI has their data sets, NVIDIA has data sets, Facebook has data sets. So there's tons of different data sets you could use. So you could come here, you could find a different modality, right? So if I want a 3D data set, whatever, I could come here and look for some, or what I can do is I can create my own data set. Now I have found, that Gemini is very, very good at creating data sets. I've also found that GPT, the latest version of GPT, which is like 4.1, is actually very, very good at creating data sets too. So I'm using Gemini 2.5 Pro. I'm asking it to create a very simple data set, create a data set that I can use to train a late white AI, late, lightweight AI model on math. So it goes ahead and creates that for me. You're gonna wanna make this an input output format. So it's saying I can update this for you. I'll modify it, find a header, right? And it goes ahead and updates that for me to be um, input output. 
So then you can go ahead and have that, right? So basically you can create a data set however you want. Um, you could download your own data set. You could create a data set using AI, but basically you're gonna wanna use it. You, you're gonna wanna have a data set that does a specific task for you. Your best bet is probably gonna be to come to Hugging Face and find one and then maybe optimize it using AI. That's something you could do. I've actually found that just creating my own data set seems to work really, really well depending on the use case. So once you have a data set that you wanna use, you can then come in and you can actually train a data set. So, you know, you have like an example. So I'm using JSONL files. So that's what Together AI uses is these JSONL files, right? So I'm using a JSONL file. And essentially, once you have a JSONL file, you're gonna wanna create a very simple Python script. So here's the Python script that it's giving me. I'm taking this straight from their documentation and I can upload these as well. If somebody wants to use them, just drop a comment. Um, I'll link to these as well. I'll put this in like a GitHub so you can use these as well. And essentially you're gonna give it your API key, right? So you have to have the, your own API key for Together AI, right? So we already have that. And this is actually the fine tune example. So let's go to the upload file example. So let's go to the file, let's see. Okay, so in this example, you can see that I have a training file, right? So I'm referencing a JSONL file. So wherever this Python script is running, just put the file in that folder, reference it, give it your API key, let it know which model you wanna use. Um, you're gonna wanna set Laura to true. You're gonna give it a name, so you can give it whatever name you want. And then you're gonna go ahead and run this script, right? And once you run this script, what it's gonna do is it's gonna give you a specific training file name. So after you run the script, it's gonna give you a training file name. Once you have that training file name, you're gonna create a new Python script to actually start the fine tuning process, right? So this gives you a file for fine tuning. So it basically uploads your JSONL file to be fine tuned. And then you run this script to actually fine tune your model. Again, I can provide you this script. Um, I'll put this into GitHub, you could run this. Um, so again, you're gonna give it your together uh, AI API key. You're gonna give it that file name that it gives you after running this script. You're gonna again, give it the model that you wanna train and then uh, give it your suffix and then run this. And then it's gonna go ahead and train your model. So once your model is trained, you're gonna come over here to um, together AI, you're going to click on models and you're going to see all the models that you've trained here. Now, what's really cool is I can actually go to the playground here and I can actually start using the models that I've trained, right? So if you've trained a model on something specific, you can come in here and you can actually test it out and see how it works, right? So if I come down to my models, I can see uh, my Laura models, like the models that I have specifically trained, right? And I can start trying those out. So an another thing you're going to want to do is create a system prompt. So depending on um, how you're going to use these AI systems, you're going to need a system prompt. So anytime I'm generating a data set, I'm also typically generating a system prompt. So I'll probably come here and say, please give me a system prompt for this data set to, I'll just say, please give me a system prompt for this data set. So let's see what it does. So it should give us a, a very simple prompt that we're going to add to this data set. So you're a mathematical assistant I and mean, it gives you a, a simple prompt. So if I come in here and add this here and we start asking it questions. So um, I'm gonna say, you know, what is 10 times 12 divided by 15 plus 45, right? Just some, some random question, right? So I have a trained data set. I'm giving it a certain system prompt and it's acting for me and it's gonna do this task better than if I had a model that wasn't trained in this way, right? So there's a ton of advantages, right? You get a model that's trained to do exactly what you want. So it's gonna do it faster and it's gonna do it better. It's gonna do it a lot cheaper because you don't have to run this big complex model to do tasks for you, right? It's gonna do it a lot cheaper and it's gonna be uh, really, really efficient all the way around. And you can use APIs to tie this all together. So in my business, uh, lucidaistrategies.com, um, what I do is I do this for companies. I train lightweight AI models to do tasks for companies. We've done this for a bunch of companies already. Check us out at lucidaistrategies.com. If you want to work with us on doing this for your company, I can help you out and give you a free consultation. I can show you how we do this process. Um, we've done it for analytics, chatbot development, process automation within your company, automate certain processes, uh, remove the need for certain employees, things like that. It's a great way to save money and just inc increase your efficiency as a company. So um, some really cool stuff. I just wanted to bring you this. So if you wanted to do this on your own without having to you know, use a consultant like us, it's the simplest way I have found is with together.ai. Uh, they just make the process super simple. I just showed you everything that I do uh, in, in terms of how I, I run these data sets. Uh, if you have any questions, drop a comment below. If you like this video, give it a like. It really helps out my channel a lot. And subscribe to the channel for more AI tutorials just like this.